Hello YouTube, what I'm doing today is I'm gonna change the anode rod in my GE Geospring hybrid water heater. So I have turned the power off to the water heater. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and use my shutoff valves to shut the water supply off to the water heater. I've connected a hose down on the bottom and I'm draining a little bit of the water out, but not much. Just enough so that it's not pressurized any longer but I want to leave a lot of the weight of the water in the water heater so that it will hold the water heater down while I'm attempting to get the anode rod out. I'll explain in just a moment how to get this cover off and everything. It's really straightforward, honestly. I guess I'll just go ahead and explain it now. So pretty much you've got this plastic cover um, in this space. You've got this also filter that's there. So what I would do first is remove the filter, get that out of the way. And you saw the way I just squeezed those two little connectors there. The next thing you wanna do is remove this part, which is just held in by a few clips around the water heater. You see a couple here. Once you get the, uh, the screws out of that, that's gonna be a T15, a Torx 15. I'm gonna go ahead and just set this up and out of the way. The next thing you wanna do is remove the screws the sheet metal screws that are going around the side here, and there's a few in the back. I just left this one in to kind of hold it in place while I was waiting for my anode rod to come in. My local hardware store did not have a magnesium rod. They only had aluminum and they had the bendy ones. I didn't really want the bendy ones because it had a spot that bends in the center that I feel like that would corrode faster than the rest of the rod and possibly break off leaving part of the rod down in the water heater. So I didn't want to use one of those because I do actually have plenty of room up above to be able to pull my rod out. So that's not an issue with me. And that's the reason why you would use one of those. I did order this anode rod on homedepot.com. I want to say it was around $40, including shipping. It's a magnesium rod. It's 44 and 3 16 of an inch long. However, I need a 39 inch rod to go in this water heater according to the documentation that I found online. But what you can do is that is measured from the very end here down. So I measured 39 inches and marked it and I'm just gonna cut it off with a hacksaw before placing it in. I haven't cut it yet because I wanna make sure that this rod will fit this water heater. This is my first time actually doing this. So, Let's see how it goes, number one. And number two, I wanna make sure that rod's gonna fit in this water heater before I start cutting on it, because if it's the wrong one, I wanna be able to return it. So um, the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and drain this tank after shutting off my water supply. So this is kind of a funky looking valve. It doesn't have a handle on it, but it does have a slot here. So I'm gonna to try to use a flat bladed screwdriver to open this. And that actually worked pretty easily. So I'm gonna allow some of the water to drain out of this. So if the water flow from your hose needs a little encouragement, you can always just pull your pressure relief valve just a little bit and you'll hear the air bubbling in there to allow some air into the tank to allow water to come out of the tank. So on this water tank with the covers removed, you can kind of see what's going on in here. And the anode rod is actually going to be right down there. Nice and convenient to get to. <laughs> so you're gonna reach down and pull out the little well. So I've encountered my first problem obviously and so the first thing you can notice is that on the top of the anode rod right there there is a bolt head. I'm assuming because this uh, water heater has a feature that says anode Although it does say hold to reset, so that would tell me it's probably time-based. But I don't know why there would be a wire going to it unless there was some sort of sensing mechanism within the water heater to tell when the anode rod goes bad or not. So I'm presented with two options here. Option A is try to find an anode rod that has the threaded bolt head on it so I can put that nut and the sensor back on. Or B, I could not reinstall that and install this anode rod to replace it but then I, then this functionality may or may not work correctly so i'm going to see if i can find that other anode rod 
because I want to put it back together the way it's supposed to be, even though the part number for this water heater has been discontinued. So I'm not quite sure where I would obtain that, but I'm going to look for it. Okay, everybody, so I'm going to do my best to get a good camera angle here. I've tried to set the camera sort of out of the way, but also where you can see. So to remove the anode rod that's there, you obviously see what we've got going on here is a nut to hold this wire on there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull that wire up. It's just a push terminal. And remove that wire out of the way. Then I'm gonna find out what size nut that top nut is and get that terminal out of the way so we can actually pull the anode rod. Okay, so it seems to be like a 13 millimeter fits on there pretty well. So let's see if we can get this bad boy out of there without bumping the camera too much. Now if that just came loose, that means it was barely tight and it is loose. So that was barely even on there. Let's use my little magnet to get that out. And grab the little washer with your connection on there. Your wire connector, just that'll zoom in. That's all that is, nothing fancy. All right, so I've got my one and one sixteenth, one and one sixteenth inch socket here, and I'm just verifying that it fits, and it does. Now I'm gonna go get a nice big breaker bar and attach it to this thing, and see if we can get this anode rod out of here. All right, so I'm just using a standard size breaker bar like you would use to work on your car. Let's see if I can pop this thing out with that. Oh, and we're turning. Fantastic. I'm going to attach my ratchet. So I just got my ratchet on here now. And we are turning as you can see. So that wasn't too bad. I've heard horror stories about loosening these things up. actually turning my hand at this point and I think actually we are out so I'm get my socket out of there let's see if we can pull this rod out if anybody knows a good trick for this part feel free to drop it down in the comments this is sort of working I think and my socket came off okay cool I'm, you see I'm just kind of cocking it to the side like that Trying to pull up on it. Maybe a screwdriver to pry up would work too. So I'll try to just come in with a screwdriver on the side and kind of just see if I can pull up on it a little bit. I really can't get my finger in there. This may work, but I may have to move the camera out of the way. It's really hard to work on right here. Yeah, I think that's going to work, but I'm going to have to move the camera out of the way so I can actually make it happen. So I've got the old anode rod out, and I've set it next to the new one to do a side-by-side -side comparison. The biggest difference is the old anode rod has this little attachment here, and it's my understanding that it has some sort of wire core that sends a signal, like the, the water heater sends a signal through the wire, and once the wire becomes exposed, that's when it tells you that the anode rod is bad and needs replacement. This one might be able to go a little longer, a couple more years, I'm not sure. I mean, it doesn't look completely eroded and terrible, but given the fact that it doesn't look great and it is pitted pretty deep in some areas here, I would expect that center to go off pretty soon. So the next thing you'll notice about the rod is that this one is longer. The new one is longer than the old one. So I'm gonna have to cut that down. I'm just gonna take a hacksaw. I'm gonna measure it to be the same distance and uh, just cut it down. To measure these anode rods, you measure actually from the top of the nut here all the way down. The uh, anode rod part number that was in there was supposed to be 39 inches. You can see this is actually longer than that, probably 39 and three quarters ish. The new rod that I have here is 44 and three sixteenths. So what I'm gonna do is measure from the top of this nut down to 39 inches. I'm gonna mark it with a Sharpie and then cut it with a hacksaw.
So I've got all the sticky stuff from the label cleaned off. Got a little thread seal tape and some pipe dope on there. I'm gonna just drop this thing down on the water heater. And I apologize for the hair. So we're getting a little overflow here. So I'm gonna drain the tape just a little more. Open my valve down here. Looks like the electronics are above that line, so I don't think it's a problem, but. All right, now let's tighten this up. So now you've got your new anode rod in place, what you want to do is make sure that you put a little foam bit back over it and then reassemble your water heater. Now if you've been following along and paying attention, what you'll notice is that I did not reconnect this little wire here. And the reason why I did not do that is a couple of reasons. For this water heater, there is a specific part number as we've talked about with that little nut on top where you can actually attach the lead and get an anode reading for how much life is left on your anode rod. And GE has discontinued that part. There's a replacement part, I think it's like $140. It's only available for one uh, online retailer. You can only buy it in one place. So that's a little bit ridiculous. The rod I just bought from Home Depot was $40. All I had to do was cut it down. And all that does is discontinue this feature on the water heater, which means that you'll have to pull it out every couple of years and check it which is fine by me. I will do that to save the extra $100. Um, you may wish to buy the other uh, anode rod yourself. You can do that. Uh, oh, the torque spec on this thing, by the way, it said seven to eight foot pounds. I got it tighter than that, so I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna leave it alone. I just got it snug. I didn't get it Hulk torqued down or anything like that. But from here, I'm gonna go ahead and just put my water heater back together. Um, so if you made it this far, I think you can handle the reassembly. So one last thing I've done for somebody in the future, if they want to re-add that anode rod sensing function, I left the bolt and a little washer here taped to the top of the water heater. That way, that option is available if somebody wants to do it in the future. So I thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope this helps you out in making the decision, hey, do I want to replace my anode rod with the GE anode rod or just replace it with a regular an magnesium anode rod? And I'll put the link down in the description again to both of the anode rods. Both the factory one, I contacted GE, I got the part number and all that stuff. I'll put that in the description and I'll put the one that I used as well. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And thank you very much, YouTube. I appreciate it. Everyone, if you enjoyed today's video, I would invite you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below right there on the right hand corner. And if you felt that the products in today's video is something you might like to own yourself, there's a product link right up there to the right, upper right hand corner or down in the description will be a product link for you to purchase the product as well. Thank you very much for watching YouTube.